everyone, welcome to my video. I am in the studio today and I am going to be showing you how I do uh, proteas with texture paste. So I have a small version of one of my bigger paintings that I am reworking. And as you can see, I've done the background, which I can take you through in a different video. Um, and I've just blocked in my image with paint. So um, a lot of people draw it on and then paint it on and then play with some texture. I just skip a step so I, I, draw, I skip the drawing and I whack it straight on with paint and then I'm going to go over it with texture we'll build some ink and build some layers so this will be a bit of a multi-step process because obviously there's a bit of drying time involved uh, but I can't wait to tell you what I do with it and um, yeah stay tuned I will turn the camera around and you can have a watch okay so what I've got here is my trusty piece of core flute as my palette um, I like using core flute only because it's plastic it can be washed you can scrape the old dry texture paste or gel off it if you don't quite use the whole pile um, and it's pretty durable and it will last quite a long time if you keep it clean so a couple of blobs of texture paste now the texture paste I'm using is chromacryl uh, texture paste there are heaps of different varieties of texture paste on the market um, but I find chromacryl does a really good job and it's not overly expensive. You can buy really good artist quality, um, super thick texture paste, um, but sometimes you find those thicker ones are actually a bit harder to do what we wanna do. So I opt for Chromacryl. By all means, try anything else if you want to, um, but that's probably my go-to and my favorite. So what I'm gonna do now is tint this color. So I want a bit of a yellow at one end and I want a red at the other. And what I'm giving myself is a two-part mix so that I can get some variation in the petals of my protea. So I've got three proteas sitting in here and they are the ones I'm gonna focus on. So what I wanna do is mix my texture paste with my light color first. Now the light, reason I wouldn't do the dark color first is obviously I would have a deep ready pink on one end and then I would be dragging that all the way through my nice yellow ochre at the other end. So I wouldn't end up with a nice clean color. Um, so always, Start mixing with your lighter color first. Now you can completely wash your palette knife in between mixing the colors if you want to. I just tend to give it a good scrape off. Now if a little bit of that transfers, it's not gonna be the end of the world because this red pigment is quite strong, it will overpower anyway. So I'm gonna give it a good mix. You can see that I've used enough red. Now what I've actually used there is cadmium red. If you have a bit of a cheaper paint and it's a cheap red, you may find that it takes a fair bit of that paint to actually get it to tint the texture paste to the color that you're after. Um, you may actually find too that it goes a bit pink instead of staying that really nice intense red color. Um, so a lot of the time, um, if you're having issues with color, um, sometimes it could be to do with the brand or the quality of the paint that you're using. So what I'm gonna do is start with this one up the top. Now I wouldn't start with the one at the bottom because I'd risk running my knuckles through it and making a complete mess as I'm working. But keep in mind as well, it's actually easier to turn the canvas sometimes than it is to move your body around. So if I turn this canvas, I've got myself a prime little working area for building these petals where I want them. Now, because it's a smaller piece than what I would normally build, I'm going to build them with a smaller palette knife. So if I look at my reference photo here, I can see that there's quite a pink look to the outside of my petals and to the outer tips, yet when they get further down, they're a more natural color, which is why I've gone with the yellow ochre mix. So I wanna pick up that variation in both colors when I put my petal down. So I've picked up a little bit of both of my colors. I'm gonna sit the palette knife down, squeeze it a little bit so that I get a nice little ridge and I'm gonna drag backwards. I'm gonna basically repeat this process several times to build the petals around my protea. Now palette knives can be a little bit tricky. <laughs> if you want it thinner, you have to kind of work on a side angle so that you're not getting a really big flat section if you're wanting a thinner petal. Um, it takes a bit of practice, but the beauty is too, if you make a big boo-boo, you can just scrape it off and start again. So be brave with it. Don't, um, don't treat it as one of those things that's gonna you know, overwhelm you forever and not let you get the results that you want. But if you do make a mistake, they can always be fixed. So see how I've started from the back of my protea and I'm working actually around the side so that 
when I put these front pedals on, they're actually sitting in front of the pedal that's behind them. The last thing I'm gonna do is put all my front pedals on first and then try and work the other pedals in round behind it because that would be reasonably difficult and take a little bit more patience than what I wanna use. So I'm working my way round. Now I'm ignoring the center of my Protea because I'm gonna come back in and paint it in later. It's one of the details that I like to put back in with a paintbrush, um, sometimes a little bit of a squeezy tube. Um, I have a few different layers and techniques of what I do to the inside of my Protea. So at this point, I'm literally focusing on building those petals, getting that beautiful Protea shape. Now in front here, there'll be a couple of little shorter ones that tuck down and they usually overlap. So they sit in between the gaps and that's that one completed. So now I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna continue. Okay, so that's got to a point where I'm happy with where those petals are situated on my canvas. Basically the trick now is to not run anything through them and not let anything sit on it until it dries. Um, now it's raining here today, so I can't whack it out in the sunshine and get a quick drying result for us. However, if it was sunny, I'd pop it out in the sunshine and make that drying process a little bit quicker. Um, what I'm also gonna do while I've got some texture paste on the palette, I don't wanna waste it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually now build these little paper daisies. Um, and actually build some extra texture with them. So in my image that I refer to all the time, they are actually reasonably red elements. So what I wanna do is just pop my texture paste on. Now I have a trick for my little paper daisies because palette knives aren't usually small enough to get them exactly how I want or get the detail that I want. So I'm gonna pop them on. I'm gonna pop each little petal on just so that I get it filled and have enough texture paste where I want it. Now, I try and be a bit ambidextrous sometimes so I don't have to continually move my canvas. I can just swap hands and use the other hand. If you don't have that trick, by all means, <laughs> turn your uh, canvas around. Now, what I wanna do is build the nice little dome center that is usually featured in that paper daisy. I wanna again build it thick enough so that I've got something to work with. So nice and round. Now what I'm gonna come back in with is a color shaper. Now if you haven't seen one of these, it basically has got a handle like a paintbrush, but it's got a silicon tip on it. So the silicon tip is amazing. I'm just gonna get a paper, paper towel. 
The silicon tip is really clever for scraping any bits of texture paste back off that I don't want. So I want a little ring basically around the center because there's a visual gap between the center of these and where the petals actually come out from. There is also in most of them a little hole in the center of that middle piece and I want to just put it in. It may not be pale colored when I get to the end but I want to be able to put a little bit of ink in there and get that piece to be a different color and then we've just got a little bit of a petal texture that I can literally rub gently with my color shaper and make that. So we're just making indicators of where the petals might sit so that when I pop some ink on it later, the ink can sit really interestingly down in amongst the texture paste. So I've got a tiny little one sitting up in here. And I'm just gonna again pop these petals on. This one has a bit of a paler center, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my yellow ochre in with my red so that it's not super bright. And again, I'm gonna take out the center piece. And the last one I've got. Two to go.
And that's it for this stage. I now need to let that dry before I can then add some ink and start working with some extra layers in the painting. Um, so I will put the video back on record when I'm ready for the next step. Thanks for joining me.